Thank you very much. I feel like I should uh, run, run down there. Um, thanks all for being here and, and um, to Jack as well. Um, Jack asked me to come and speak and he told me I had about 15 minutes. So uh, naturally I negotiated that to 20. Uh, so please bear with me just for 20 minutes or so. I think I can give some value, slightly different session. Um, but tonight I'm going to be talking to you about building a property portfolio with focus. And I'll come on to explain exactly what that means as we go through it. As we just obviously had the elevator pitches, the nice thing is obviously I've kind of got an, a gauge for the experience in the room. So a lot of you might have had this realisation, but have you ever had the realisation that property is fucking tough? <laughs> okay, now I know what you're thinking, Jack's brought me here to give some motivation and within a few minutes I've kind of obviously put a, put a bit of a downer on everyone. But the reason being is that I truly believe that when it comes to property, the reason that it is, you know, when, when we're going through this process, it does get tough at times. It's hard to find deals. When you get the deal secured, it maybe isn't exactly what you'd hoped for. Maybe it's a leasehold house. And then maybe when you complete on it, maybe it needs more work than required. You know, all these issues come up. And that's why 95% of people stop. Okay, and maybe they stop at one or two by to lets, which is still an incredible achievement. But there's the 5% of those, or 5% of us, I should say, because we are going to go on and do that, and that is that build larger portfolios. We push through, okay? And I like to also call us the 5% crazy. And these 5% are probably the ones that eventually, they, they get the jackpot. They get what we're all secretly, apart from the bigger picture in life, we'd all, we'd, a lot of us would like time, we'd like holidays, and uh, obviously the flash cars as well. <laughs> And it's the ones that, that the one of us that, uh, that go through that process, build true wealth first, and then obviously can purchase these properly, properly rather than um, on leases and different things. So I truly believe everyone here, and including myself, I, I, you know, I say this to hold myself accountable, we can become that 5% crazy just by remaining focused on what we started off wanting to do. Uh, so just very quickly before I move on, a little bit about me for anyone that hasn't met me before or seen me with a camera on my face on YouTube. Um, I am Justin Wilkins. I kind of break my property journey down to three seasons, sorry, my life down to three seasons, which is uh, season one, there I am. In 2009, me as an estate agent, um, very fresh faced and a lot less wrinkles. Um, season two, I kind of was my entrepreneurial phase, or well, that's where it all kicked off, where I realized I wanted something more, and that's why I actually left a state agency. I set up my own business, um, whilst also working full-time um, in a different sales role. Um, and then most recently, um, from sort of 2019 onwards, when I bought that first buy to let and my whole world was kind of flipped upside down, I'm now kind of what I call, you know, property, or, or kind of do a bit of business as well. Um, and that's under the umbrella of Property X. Now, that, First purchase that I talked to you about was this one here. Nothing particularly fancy. I, as someone, because I'm actually based um, just outside of Brighton, so five hours from here, I didn't necessarily think that doing a full BRR was the perfect way to start my journey. I thought I should at least, you know, cut my teeth on something a little bit less, which was a turnkey buy to let. So this was on for 70,000, I bought it for 58, it produced a good, a reasonably good ROI on the money that I was obviously putting into the deal. Um, considering the year, obviously deals were a lot easier to find like that back then. Uh, my second one, I did think, yeah, this is actually the time where I'm going to try the, the buy refurbish refinance process, which is really where I'd like to continue building my portfolio. Very easy, small, single lets, um, which are a bit like a cookie cutter method, where if, once you've done one or two, you can kind of just repeat it. So purchased, purchased at 50, um, did a, a refurb, which was meant to be about 15, but naturally was ended up 17. Um, and, well, you can see the numbers there. Um, looked like a crack then, not, not so much of a crack then. Um, and that's kind of what I remain focused on trying to find and secure direct to vendor at the right price. I've got three more like that going through at the moment. Um, would love to share more on that, but They've been held up in legals, uh, so I can't, unfortunately. 
Uh, but that's an example of one of the ones I'm buying. I really, for my own portfolio, really focus on direct to vendor because that's where I can secure at the price where I think at the moment is right. Um, and obviously, as of lately, I have moved on to Property X, which is it's my cash flow business. It's helping me build cash flow to then invest into property. Um, within eight months, I've managed to source 30 houses. Obviously, some of those are still in legals, so it's not a full completed 30 properties yet. Um, but tonight, I'm trying to speed through this because I know we're a little bit pushed for time. Uh, we're going to be talking about focus and tools, okay? So first of all, focus. I want to help you find your focus in property because most people start up here on the top left and they go, oh, I, th I think I might want to do a buy to let. And they go, yeah, that seems like a really nice idea. Um, but then they actually find out actually it's quite hard to sometimes find them. And, or maybe is it, is it worth it for only 250 pounds profit per month at the end? Oh, actually, maybe I'll do a HMO because HMOs, they're, they're better in cash flow. Um, oh, but actually HMOs, they actually cost quite a lot. And especially if it needs work, then I've got to do a refurb. Actually, it's quite a lot of work. Maybe I'll do rent to rent. And then you can see where I'm going with this. Rent to rent, oh, maybe I don't want to pay someone 900 pounds or 1,000 pounds to a landlord. So maybe I'll do sourcing because then I don't have the commitment. Oh, but actually if I'm going to source it, you know, and you can see where I'm going. Eventually, they might get round to... I, I see some people, and they've never done a deal, and they come to me and go, well, I think I'm about doing commercial to, you know, to Resi. So what do you think, Justin? And I say, well, what happened to three months ago when you wanted to do buy to let? And, and I, I, I say it with a smile on my face, because I've been there, I've done that. It's a natural process that we all go through when we get stuck. So therefore, we should find focus. And I think the best investors I meet are the ones who continue on that same path. Maybe some things change, but for the, for the most part, they stuck to the plan and they just repeat. So focus on obviously one thing. Now, in this room or in general, I have a theory that I think there is three property, uh, property personality types, three main ones, although that will vary slightly. I think we've got the pension investor. I think we've got the full-time investor. And I think we have the more kind of business owner, entrepreneurial style property um, investor as well. And I'm really just gonna quickly talk you through that if, if you fit into one of those categories, how can you apply focus to your journey right here, right now? So a pension investor might be someone, of course, that maybe works full time, maybe they're more risk adverse, they might have you know, capital from savings, and their plan really is buy to let, good long-term investments, low, uh, low maintenance, and obviously continue that cycle of save, buy, save, and buy. So for them, what I, when I talk to people, and I guess what I think they should be doing, if that is where you're currently sat, is focusing on these three things. You should just be focusing on viewings, offers, and of course, just buying that property. And in order to do that, we should be looking at these lines here, which is, you know, really just strip it back, make it basic, use your own time, sign up to sources, maybe use something called Viewber, which will help you do viewings if you are not located in the area. With offers, track your offers, follow up with the agents regularly. And then obviously with your savings, you need to try and hack or find a way in which you can continue to save, repeat, and um, obviously build up more money to buy more properties. And again, it sounds really simple when I put it like this, but the amount of people that don't hit one of those things and then go on a complete tangent is, is very regular. The full-time investor, where it starts to develop from here, is obviously more committed to growth on their property portfolio. They might look to do raise finance, do JVs, um, and obviously maybe slightly less risk averse because they're, they're all in on this. And obviously because of that, they might do more, more in-depth you know, uh, BRR deals. They might want to raise finance, obviously manage the trades themselves. You, you never know, they're, they're probably the typical attributes. So then it just comes down to, well, instead of, you know, the main part of the last one was, you know, how can we get capital quicker? How can we do viewings? This one really, obviously the same on the viewing side, You've got to do more viewings, got to make more offers, and we've got to communicate more with, you know, with vendors, so do more D to V. But really the bottleneck here, when you're full time in property and you want to do more, could be raising finance could be JVs, so then we focus on that area. And then obviously we focus on building out a good trades team. So again, it's just three simple steps to helping you, uh, I guess, grow quicker and develop quicker rather than getting lost in your own brain, thinking about other strategies. Go back to that initial part, right, what part am I at? What do I need to focus on? 
Last of all, obviously, business owners somewhat similar in the sense that, you know, they're going to end up doing buy refurbishment finance, maybe. They might do flips. Um, and obviously, they want to continue building their business whilst they do it, so they might be slightly busier. Therefore, similar process, but they are going to follow that same kind of funnel. Now, the reason I've used a funnel for each of these is because whether it's business, whether it's property, most things revert back to that funnel. And buying a property is at the very bottom. So really just got to work your way back from at which point are you stuck and what can you do more of? Because most people I talk to that haven't bought a property and are struggling aren't viewing enough. And the most people that are viewing lots and making offers and getting accepted but then panicking at the next stage, they just haven't got enough money coming in or they are getting stuck for finance. And then obviously the people that panic when it gets to the refurb stage because they haven't put enough time, effort and thought into working with uh, builders. So a few, a few tools for you quickly, because I said, I said I'd obviously share some tools with you. If you want to do obviously more views, more offers, you might start to track them a bit more. So here are some softwares, Airtable, Google Sheets, Trello, Pipedrive, I stole that one from you the other week, Jack. That's a very good bit of software. Uh, finance, obviously you're here at a networking event. You see me on social media all the time, and you wouldn't believe the amount of people within your network, within your family and colleagues that have money. And I genuinely mean that. What I say to a lot of people is literally just write out a list of everyone you know, how much money you think they've got saved in their bank account. The chances are there's probably some money there and you can talk them into investing with you. And then obviously with refurbs, again, I have a lot of people I talk to obviously through social media. And a lot of people say to me, well, it's all gone wrong with the refurb. The builders run off with my money or they've not done what I asked. I said, all oh, right, well, what about one of the other builders? that you initially spoke to. I said, oh, what? And they'll often come back and say, well, I'll, I only got one quote. So, you know, get a couple of quotes and maybe check the builder's work prior to starting. Maybe use contracts and I use, I use DocuSign. So I'm kind of going to wrap this session up really by just with a few questions to just say, out of those property personality types, which one do you think you are? What type of investor are you? What is your 10-year goal? And what three elements will you be focusing on based on whether you are a full-time investor, whether you're a pension investor, or whether you are a business owner? And remain focused on those bottlenecks because that will help you through and overcome when you get stuck. And effectively, I could have called this, what is your why? Because at the end of the day, the why and the reason that you're doing this, the reason you want to build a portfolio is what ultimately will get you through all of this I've just explained it slightly different. And also I think sometimes when you say, what is your why, people switch off a little bit. I think actually that is the ultimate thing. That's gonna, what's gonna get you up every day on a morning when it's raining outside, you get up and you think, fuck this. That's what's gonna get you through it. But then you can practically implement what I've said today to help you as well. But just last, one last thing is, um, so I'm losing my voice. Um, is that was me in 2019, that was my plan. And um, things change. So although I've told you to remain solely focused on that goal, things will change naturally. I didn't plan to be in 2025 having quit my job, gone full time in property. I just thought, I'm just gonna get five by to let. But what's happened is, is I've quit my job, I've done full time into sourcing, I'm now trying flips and as well as buy to lets. But I think I'm gonna end up there. So just follow that journey, but try and constantly go back to that initial focus. Um, and um, when we all do, in whether it's 10 years time, 20 years time, I, I will see you there and we'll raise a glass. And uh, anyway, thank you very much for listening. I hope it was interesting. And uh, yeah, thanks, Zach. When, when did you guys decide to leave like, your, you know, your day job and how did you know that that was the right time? Justin, you did it most recently. I did, so yeah. Do you want to yeah. Uh, you told me to. <laughs> uh, no, I think um, it's a really good question. I spent a lot of time thinking about it before I did, having worked in, um, I'm 30 now, and I worked in employment for like 13 years prior to that. So it felt, I felt I'm quite a risk adverse person. So I, you know, didn't sit very well with me for a long time. But actually someone, uh, and this wasn't Jack, but someone actually told me um, 
that if you are worried about when is the right time, um, then always what you can do is try and save up, you know, six months or a year's worth of salary prior to leaving. Um, because I always thought, well, it's all good if I earn my salary monthly, but what if that suddenly dried up next month? And that was what was stopping me. And then someone said, well, why don't you just save up a year's salary then? And it, I know it sounds easier said than done, but instead of, if your dream is full-time property, instead of getting that next property, maybe use that money to set you free to then focus full-time on property. Um, but yeah, I'd say the two things really are obviously earning enough monthly through what you're doing and B, have that backup plan of savings. Um, that takes the pressure off you then as well. I'm a first time buyer, I've never bought a home before, but then also looking to take this to a property business. How would you go about that? Would you look at, you know, I'd like to grow it exponentially over the next 10 years. Would you start a limited business now? Or would you buy your first property as a residential buyer and say you look at it in six, 12 months, obviously circumstances change? If I was starting again, I think I'd focus more on building up capital, which is something I didn't do enough at the beginning. So if you've got either option, um, I'd probably yeah, go down the route of maybe utilising your home to make a, a bit of additional capital and then put it into a uh, limited company further down the line. You could do one or two of them, make that capital. Because once you've got capital, it's easier to utilise it, replenish it. It's when you're starting at a base level and then you spend it, it's then hard to get back up again.